The 2022 Florida Blue Florida Classic was the continuation of 44 years of the biggest rivalry slash family reunion in HBCU football. You know, the first time I've got a chance to share the, share the consortium, so this has been fantastic. It's a great experience. Now all we have to do is take care of the business tomorrow. That means you better be ready if you come in to play HBCU on, next, on this upcoming Saturday, and I think our guys are ready to go. The teams have been playing for decades more, but the biggest HBCU classic that is solely owned by the two institutions garners nearly $1.5 million for each school. And with over 55,000 in attendance at this year's game, they should hit that mark pretty easily. The Rosen Shingle Creek Hotel was where Bethune-Cookman Wildcats and FAMU Rattlers met on Friday before the game to engage in high-level banter in the annual Florida Blue Florida Classic Luncheon in preparation for the game with state bragging rights as well as years of family integration, as you would be hard pressed to find a family that does not have both Rattlers and Wildcats in the bloodline. The cheerleaders, presidents, and everyone else took part in getting everyone hyped and ready for the big game at Camping World Stadium on Saturday. With all the preliminaries out of the way, it was time to tee it up. BCU quarterback Jalen Jones throws this pick on the first drive as Javen Morgan runs it deep into BCU territory. FAMU quarterback Jeremy Musa would go up top to wide receiver David Manigault for this first down. Followed by this Jalen McLeod run around the left side for the game's first score. FAMU's Dark Cloud defense would harass Jones all day long. This time, middle linebacker Isaiah Major gets the sack. Anthony Dunn had a career day for the Rattlers. He caught it three sacks and one additional tackle for loss as well as recovered this fumble to give the Rattlers the ball in great field position. McLeod will get his second touchdown of the day carrying the BCU front line into the end zone with him. For the Wildcats, Kushan Bird had a productive day. The elusive running back gains big yardage on this run around the right side. To start the second quarter, he would scoot around the right end for BCU's first score. This brought the game score to 13-7 in favor of the Rattlers. Musa would come back and hit Manigo across the middle for another first down. On the next play, Xavier Smith got loose on a post route and Musa hit him with a dime, leading to the Rattlers taking a 20-7 lead in the second quarter. Smith is from Haines City, Florida, so you know he had to show that Florida salute. After a disappointing performance last week, Jose Romo Martinez nails this extra point without issue. Jones swings this pass out to Bird, who then emulates the Jets' famous butt fumble with this butt tackle. Jalen Jones decides to take matters into his own heads, but mama, there goes that man. Dunn gets his second sack of the game. Jones would then hit Kamari Everett for this move one-handed gem. Did I mention that Anthony Dunn was all over Jones? Here he gets yet another sack of the BCU quarterback. Manigault and Xavier Smith find the pockets and wait for Musa to deliver the package as FAMU executes a long drive with grinding down the game clock. You know Willie Shotgun Simmons and they got me on this one. Musa laterals to Xavier Smith who double passes back to him and the offensive line caravan escorts him untouched into the end zone. This time it's Kamari Stevens on the sack of Jones. Halftime has a lot going on so we're just going to give some props to the band directors. FAMU's Marching 100 band director Dr. Shelby Chipman and Bethune-Cookman University Marching Wildcats director Dr. Donovan Wells. Back to second half action. Bird throws this Madden move to get outside for a big game for the Wildcats. 
BCU wouldn't go away easily, scoring as Jones hits Davino Ellington on this post pattern up the middle. FAMU wasn't able to capitalize on the next drive, but Tevin Griffey, son of Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr., puts a big hit of his own on BCU's punt returner. That hit got the fans hyped and then the Rattlers were bouncing. You see him, dun 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 dun. Anthony Dunn lived in the BCU backfield all day. Jalen Jones goes straight Michael Vick, weaving through the Rattlers deep into their territory. To end the third quarter, the Rattler defense stiffened up the middle. Newly appointed FAMU Athletic Director Tiffany Dawn Sykes was making her rounds at the Florida Blue Florida Classic. <laughs> we we got to mute this part because Coach Simmons simply was not happy. Jones would connect with Everett in the back of the end zone for BCU's final touchdown of the game. The Rattlers would break through and block the extra point. Here we go again with tricking the camera. FAMU punter Chris Fadul, who in high school was a quarterback, flexes his arm, gaining a crucial first down deep in Wildcat territory. Musa would roll out to the right and hit tight end Kobe Gross, who jumps into the end zone. Musa hits David Manigo, who carries Wildcats with him for a few yards, and then Terrell Jennings would make his way to the pylon for the 41-20 final. Willie Simmons and Terry Sims made their way to midfield while the Rattlers had just begun to celebrate, defeating their arch rival in the 2022 Florida Blue Florida Classic. Well, Jeremy gutted it out. You know, uh, he had probably his worst game last week. Took a lot of criticism, throwing three interceptions, but uh, he really came tonight and played big time football. And that's the type of ability he has. But, uh, so he's a special player. He showed that tonight. You know that Bethune Cookman has won so many in the past, and you guys are kind of rewriting that a little bit. What does that mean for you as a coach? That means they keep me around a little bit longer. <laughs> Games like this, you know, uh, there's old saying that they, they, they'll rather go 0 and 10 and win the classic than 10 and 0 and lose the classic. So we know how important this game is. It's all about the fans, our students, uh, the alumni. You know, we really want to come out and represent for a while.